know I do like to see Brother Roy gasp for air while he is doing the CD. So, but uh, anyway, uh, yes. Um, you would open your Bibles to John chapter 15. John 15, and once you have found your place, I invite you to stand. John chapter 15, we are moving right along to the book of John. John 15, if you, and if you want, open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 3 and put your, uh, you know, a leaflet there or uh, some, your thumb there or whatnot. We will be there a little bit later, but that's 1 Corinthians 3. In John 15, the Jesus is also uh, teaching here. If you notice, mo if you look at the these two chapters, chapter 14, 15, and then even into you know, 16, we see there's a lot of red. Jesus is teaching his disciples. They're on their way to the garden. And uh, he's teaching them. And so if we look at John 15, verse 1, here Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, fruit he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it, uh, except it abide in the vine. No man, get, uh, no more, can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do, what's that word? Nothing. All right, Father, as we come before you this evening, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have, Lord, to gather together corporately to worship you, Lord, also to come to gather together corporately to learn from thy word, Father. I ask that you would once again empty me of my sin and myself, Father. Please fill me with thine Holy Ghost that I may preach. Thus saith the word of the Lord. And Lord, if there's anything that is buying for our time, whether it's work uh, or uh, stress is at home, Lord. I pray that we will set that aside and we will focus on your word tonight. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You see, we have got the blessed reading of his word. As you can tell, I did get some glasses. And so they came in. Uh, so my contacts, they still throw a little bit every once in a while. And so, but uh, I want to speak to you tonight on the subject Jesus isn't a Jesus is not a counterfeit. And so, this announcement, if y'all if didn't know, my birthday is tomorrow. And I've already received a card from Miss Charlie and Miss Vicki. Had one, had two out of 30, so 28 more to go. So, uh, but uh, anyway, yes, uh, Jesus isn't a counterfeit. Here we see Jesus teaching them uh, on their way to the garden about the vine and branches. If you're taking notes, number one, the true vine, the vine and his dresser. If we look at this, is it? Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. True vine. Uh, the true vine. There's a lot of vine, a lot of organizations and a lot of uh, religions out there that they say that they are a vine. They claim to be a vine, that they claim to be help to, uh, to you, to whatever it may be, whatever religion it may be. And I don't know if you know this, but there's a, there is a popular religion coming out, and it's filling, and the millennials are flocking to it like crazy, called politics. No, seriously, it is a religion now. Their, their whole life is based upon politics. And so, uh, I mean, you're, you, know, you can't even watch television anymore without politics being uh, the, the, in the theme. You know, and so... Uh, they, all these there's a lot of religions out there. There's a lot of churches out there that have that are underneath the umbrella of Christianity that are not Christians. Hello, and they are they say they're vine, but he says I am the true vine. Do you know what the responsibility for the the job of the the vine is? The job of a vine is to provide. To I got it right here to provide productiveness. To its branches. That's the job of the vine is to produce productiveness to its branches. 
you go out here and you look at the tree you have the vine and what's the it, it's there the roots there and it comes up and it is to provide what it has brought up from the ground and to go out to its branches that is the job of the vine and jesus says i am the true vine because he is the one who causes the productiveness in the branches Okay, and he says, I am the true vine. And he says, and my father is the what? Husbandman. What is a husbandman? A husbandman is the tiller of the soil. He is the one that works the soil. He is a gardener, so to speak, if you want to use uh, that word. But he is the tiller of the soil. And he is a vine dresser. He is the one that goes out and trims the tree. Trims the vines. He says, I am the vine, and my, I'm the true vine, because there's a lot of false vines. He goes, but my father is the husband. He's the one that's going to come out and trim up the branches. Number two, the, 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 the branch in its job. If we look at verse two, he says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. The branch's job. What is the branch's job? To what? To bear fruit. You go out here, these apples, these apple trees, those branches' job is to bear fruit. Right? That is its primary job is to bear fruit. When he's saying here it, that beareth fruit, the, what we get with the word fruit is a result. The result of the job of the branch is to bear fruit. The Greek word we get for branch is klama. K-L-A-M-A. -A. Now I want to give you an illustration here. I went to the apple tree and, and found a branch that didn't have, I want to make sure it didn't have any apples. Alright. This is a branch from an apple tree. Now, this branch did not have any apples, so this branch failed its job. It did not produce any fruit. But the, the, the climb of the definition is a flexible branch. See, this is a flex. All, these branches are flexible. See, the, the vine's job is to sit, make this branch productive. This job of this branch is to bear fruit. Not only to bear fruit, but what? To be flexible. Because fruit is he fruit can be heavy. You go to this well, apple tree, you'll see some of them are pretty low because there's a lot of fruit on those apples. And we are to be flexible. That's what that is. That's the Greek definition of the word branch. So think about this. A a as us, we're so, we are the branch. Christ is the vine, right? We are the branch, and it is to be tender and flexible. This is us, but we, but we sit. There's, there's too many. There's a lot of Christians out there that are not like this, but they're like this. This is off of a dead rose bush. Seriously, I went out there and cut it from their dead rose bush. See, this isn't flexible. See, if I'd have done that to that branch, it'd have just been this. This is falling apart. We have a lot of Christians that are not flexible or tender. See, this, this branch a long time ago put their fruit. Too many of us are like this branch. We have no desire to be flexible with God. We have no desire to be tender with, with, tender with God. Instead, we get stern and we, and we wind up like this dead rose bush branch. It's not very you know what this is good for? Starting the fire. Because it is dead. Off the cover. And so this is this is this is the illustration. She, they're on their way to the garden, and Jesus is using this illustration with them to teach them. And so the job of the branch is to bear fruit. And he says. Uh, that in verse 2, bring, uh, and the, those that bring forth fruit, right? Bear the fruit, he what? Purgeth it. The purge, we, the Greek word for purge is kathero, uh, which means 
to cleanse of filth and impurities from useless He says the husbandman is going to purge this. this is basically, this is what I do. I purge, I purge the branch. I cut it off. The purging means I'm cutting it off so that the branches that, that they are producing will get the nutrients and be productive. Hello? And so uh, he cleans, that clean means he, he is cleans it, cleansing it so that the sh other shoots can be productive. Friday we're going to have a crawfish boil, in our, uh, boil at our U again, right before crawfish season ends. And we are going to purge those crawfish. What does that mean? We are going to put them so that the bad stuff can come out. How does God, how does God purge these? Like this is a branch. Let's just say we have a, let's use our imaginations, right? We're still, hopefully not everybody is giving in to the gaming world and you can't use your imagination. Let's imagine there's apples right here, right? And if I start doing this, and I start cutting these off and removing these branches. What I'm, and look what now? There's going to be more nutrients and more shoots to this. I am purging the old, the bad stuff, so that the branches that are uh, bringing forth fruit can bring forth more fruit. When I was in Florida, we had a uh, a fig tree, and that first year I didn't do anything with it. Yeah, I saw it, it had, and the bottom had a bunch of dead limbs. I'm creating a mess for you. But uh, it had a bunch of dead limbs in the bottom of it. I mean, the rest of it was green and it produced. And, and so uh, the next year when it was not really cold in Florida, but, you know, when it was, when it was uh, dead and it was waiting for springtime to come around, I went around there and I went trimming on the bottom. And, it, and it, when they started coming alive, I saw the rest of the dead limbs, and I started trimming them. And just in a couple of months, the tree grew. The tree, the tree grows. It grew. Why? Because I took away those branches that were just doing that. So that the nutrients could go into the, the tree. So it could get fruit. And then he says, Father purges it. At first it purges. Purges, it means to cleanse. Purges. <coughs> cleanse of filth and impurities from useless shoots. Then he says, not only that, verse 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. The word clean we get means clean and cure. And if we look at the context here, it's saying, what this means, what he means by clean and pure means how a vine is cleared by pruning and fitting to bear fruit. That means when he says you're, he has clean, it's the vine is cleansed by pruning and fitted to bear fruit. He, he, because think about this. Who, who's been their teachers up until Christ came along? Pharisees. Jesus needed to prove the disciples so that they're fitted to bear fruit. This is what we do with people. The Word of God is the, he says, by my word, the Word of God is coming out, and God is going to say, you know what, Brother Lee? You don't need that bad music. I'm going to take that away. You're going to say, Brother Stephan, you know, you like to beat everybody in games, so I'm going to take this pride away from you. I'm leaving you alone, brother. See, he's wanting to prove your life. So you can be fitted with everything. The word is going to go with you. The word that I've spoken, you are clean by the blood. The word I have spoken. Because I'm giving you proof that the father, the husband, the people here are in Jesus. Can you imagine? Think about all the teaching that Jesus has given his disciples, the, the wisdom. 
they're on their way to the garden. He's teaching them about the vine, about him as the the father, the husband, and he's the vine, and the the, the other branches. Because he says, "Ye, y'all, who's talking to you, right?" The cleansing, how a vine is cleansed by pruning and fitted to bear fruit. He says, "Abide in me, and I in you." As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. See, the, the, this branch, it will no longer bear fruit. Why? Because it's not attached to the, to the vine. This branch is not attached to the vine. It will never bear fruit. And, and, and this just in, you and I will never bear fruit unless we stay connected to the vine. I'm not talking about just salvation. I'm talking about fellowship, relationship with our Savior. Because do being in fellowship and being connected to that vine is the only way you and I bear fruit. It's the only way you and I bear results. He said, apart from me, you cannot bear results. Listen, I've tried it. I have tried in the flesh to bear results. It doesn't happen. All it does is get me into trouble and whoever's around me into trouble. Because that flesh does not like what God has got going on. And so he says, apart from me, he can do nothing. He says, abide in me. What is that word abide? We've talked about it. It means to reside. He, it's what he says. He goes, reside in me, and I in you. As the branch, you cannot bear fruit of itself, except it of remain in the vine. No more can ye, except ye remain in me. You abide in me. He says, I am the vine. He's explaining, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth not a little bit, but what? Much fruit, for without me, ye, y'all, can do what? Nothing. You know, I looked up that word nothing in Greek. You know what it means? Nothing. It means nothing. The job of the branch is to abide in him and bear fruit. Number three. Let's look at the bearing fruit processes. Process, verse 4 and 5. Abiding in Jesus gives the opportunity to bear fruit. As long as this branch was attached to the vine, it had the opportunity to bear fruit. Right? But since I cut it off, it has no longer. Separate. Not separate. It's not with it. It is separated. It can do nothing. All it's going to do is wither and die. The bearing fruit process, the only way you and I bear fruit is to abide in him. Now Jesus says, talk, let's look at the metaphor of the, the dried up branch. Because this is a metaphor. Verse 6, he, he says, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. When people read this, sometimes they, this is where they say maybe lose their salvation, that if they don't abide in Jesus, if we, we lose our salvation, we're going to get cast into hell. It's not what he's talking about. Now, we've had a, a pastor here for a long time, and he has tried to teach English. Earlier, I was like, I know, I was reading this, and I know as I am, like, I know there's a part of speech that talks about this. I said, it's a metaphor, it's a what is it? And I went to him and I said, I can't remember what it was. It was just a metaphor. He's using this as an illustration. He goes, the, the, the dried up branch, he goes, if a man abide in me, not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. As a branch. As a branch, this is talking about his works. Not salvation, works. What do you mean? It says that he's going to be cast into a fire. Well, well, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Because Paul used an illustration uh, for talking about works. Jesus used 
uh, this as a branch because he's talking about it. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul uses something else. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, it says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work, what, shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by what? Fire. And the fire shall try every man's what? Works. Work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet as by fire. He's talking about works here in John chapter 15. He said, If a man abide in me, he not not abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch is withered, and men gather them to cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Because he's talking about producing fruit. If ye abide in me, Look at this. And my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear how much fruit? So shall ye be my disciples. He says, "You want to? This is how my Father is glorified. It's not that you bear fruit, but that you bear much." The only way we make God look good is bearing fruit, having fruit. Why do you think we get tested so much? So we produce the fruit. It's just that work. If you don't produce results at work, guess what? You're gone. You're gone. You know. Unless you're afraid to get sued. No, you, when you, you get hired for a job, they want you to produce results. And if you don't produce results, you're gone. And this is, God wants us to produce much results. This is why it is so important that we abide in Christ, that we have fellowship with Christ, that we have our relationship, an active relationship with Him. So you and I can produce much that's what it, when, when, when the word talks about glorify it means to look good at work it's my job to make my bosses look good and those that work underneath it's their job to make me look good my job as a Christian as a branch is to bear much fruit so I can make God look good that's pretty simple isn't it but too many times we decide you know what I I know there's ministries that God wants me to be talking to me about them, but I'm just not comfortable doing that, so I'm not going to do it. You're not going to bear much fruit doing that. Big matter what. The only way we, obey, we bear much fruit is O B E D I E N T. O B is the very best. These things have I spoken unto you, that you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. He says, I want you to love each other as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, what? That a man lay down his life for his what? Friends. He says, ye are my friends. Do whatsoever I can do. No greater love has any than a man laid down his life for us and gave us too far See, Jesus is not a counterfeit. There's a lot of counterfeits out there. 
And there's a lot of folks out there that think that they're serving Christ. They're serving a counterfeit because they don't know the real thing. You and I should be able to tell the difference between the counterfeit because we know the real thing. We know the If you don't, please allow me to cut the people Because you, you know what they're, you know, here. In the United States, you can get in a lot of trouble using counterfeit money. And you're going to get in a lot of trouble knowing the counterfeit serving the counterfeit. Everything Satan has is a counterfeit. So when you're serving the counterfeit, you're serving the counterfeit. You may not think it, you are, because you're a moral person. You say, I don't, I, you know, I don't cheat on my wife. I don't you know, cheat on my taxes. I don't. You know, I pay my taxes, I, I don't lie, I, I don't cuss, I know that I run around with those that do. No. You may be all those things. You may be more than those But you're still serving God. Jesus is not the Listen, I don't know what brought you here. Maybe, you know, what's going on this week. Maybe your week is all hate life. Your life may be messed up. You may, you may be coming to church trying to find some help. Listen, Jesus, Jesus is. Out here. It's not. It can't be that he. But it is that he. Trusting him. Jesus is. He's. He is. You want to produce results in your life. Father, as we conclude tonight, as we see here, Father, that Jesus is the true God. Lord, the only way we bear fruit and have results, Lord, is if we are connected. Lord, if there's someone here, Lord, that has never been connected to the true vine, Lord, they have put their faith and their trust in uh, other vines, Lord, whether it's depending on themselves or being a good person or whatever it may be, Father, and I, I ask, Lord, that you would the Holy Spirit would go forth, Lord, and show them that they need to be connected to the truth. Lord, that when the music begins to play and the invitation is open, Lord, to come forward, Lord, to talk to our pastor, Lord, that so we can introduce them to the truth. And so they can get connected and grafted toward the family of God. Lord, so I don't know what's going on with everyone here. Last thing.